that you have to, you know, work on yourself, learn new things, then you're going to stay where you are. Hey, hey, and welcome to the You Can Be Anything podcast, a place where we talk about every and anything that impacts our lives on this journey of becoming our best versions. My name is Solange Che, and I am your host. In this podcast, I share my experiences, I share my story, my successes, my failures, my fears, my challenges, all with the goal to inspire someone out there. I stand to tell you today that no matter how many rock bottoms you hit in life, there is always room for self-improvement. So do not give up on yourself because we are all unique in one way or the other. And because we have different stories and tackle life from different angles, I bring in guests to share their experiences, their stories with us, to give us tips on what they are doing and how they are doing things differently. Remember that in life, there is no one size fits all. So my goal is to be able to provide a repository where my audience will be able to come back to and say, hey, there was this guest that shared his or her experience on a specific topic and I would like to gain some more insights from that. So it also serves as a knowledge base. I hope you get the best value out of this and that someday you will come back to be my guest. Thank you for being part of the You Can Be Anything tribe. Hey, hey, once more, welcome to yet another episode of the You Can Be Anything podcast. I'm your host, Solange Che, and today is an exciting day. Finally, I know that I've, so some of you will talk to me personally. I've told you how much I want to talk to other people, right? That urge to talk to be somebody that is not Cameroonian. And finally, I found an amazing guy who is here to talk to us about what he does. So I'm going to bring Chris up. Chris is a, cinema, a cinematographer, and he's here to talk to us about what he does. How are you so much? I'm doing great, if it, if it, Christopher. If it, if it, feels, it feels good to be here. I actually feel very special. <laughs> oh, you are special. For saying yeah. yes to me, I trust you that you're special. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for creating the time. It no is problem, truly no problem. appreciated. Awesome. Yeah, no so again, I have said that you're a cinematographer. I have mentioned that. I've said your name. Anybody who looks at your name will most probably be able to say that Chris is a Nigerian. Yes, he is Nigerian and he is a cinematographer. But Chris, I want to give you an opportunity. I know that talking with you before, you have already shown me signs of modesty, but I want you to please don't show too much modesty here. Let's forget what your father said a little bit. Tell us who you are. Tell us about yourself. Who would you uh, describe Chris Mukongo to be? Okay. Um, like, first of all, let's start by you. You, you first said it's just strictly Nigerian. Let's correct it. Uh, I'm Nigerian by birth, but the other side, I'm actually Cameroonian. If you look at my bio on Instagram, you see. Uh, America, Nigeria, and Cameroon. Cameroon actually even comes before Nigeria. Do you understand? So, like, Cameroon is my home. Cameroon, I, I love Cameroonians. Don't get it wrong. Like, okay. so, but, but let's start. You know, my, my name is Christopher Konko. Um, uh, I'm a cinematographer. I was never born a cinematographer. I went to military school, born into a military home. You know, um, why did I decide to be a cinematographer? Like, a couple of things happened to me when I lost my dad many years ago, and uh, I told myself, like, um, how do I tell the world what had happened to me? I, like, how can I tell my story? How can I tell the world that, okay, look at what my mom went through after I lost my dad? You know, and I told myself, I don't want my family or whether I, I get married to at that time to go through whatever I went through. So I told myself, okay, let me go into this industry to be able to tell my story. Now, going to the industry, um, I started off as, um, I was just helping people, carrying lights, doing sound and all that stuff, you know. Um, I, I'm from a background of uh, real estate. We sell houses, we build houses in Nigeria and we sell. Uh, by the grace of God, we're, not, we're one of the biggest real estate companies in Nigeria, Netcom Most Limited. Uh, we, own, we own Victoria Crest Homes also in Nigeria. We build, uh, we build the first solar, solar um, units in Africa, by the way. Wow. So um, coming from a background of um, all that, I, I never want, uh, uh, my family never wanted me to go into entertainment. They felt like, okay, these guys that do entertainment, they smoke, they do this. You know, they, they are crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but but somehow, you know, somehow I found myself doing this. I started by, you know, helping people carry their lights, push things around and all that until somehow I found myself in America. 
right? So while I was in America, I realized that, oh, I couldn't work because I, I didn't even have my papers to work. So I knew that I needed to find a way to make ends meet. Do you understand? So yeah. uh, my, my, my big sister, I think it was your uncle, she took me to this guy. He's a Cameroonian, by the way. His name is Victor Koko. So she took me to his office. You know, I met Victor. Victor has this uh, VPS studio in Maryland. You know, he was the first person I ever worked with in America as, you know, I was there at his office, you know, trying to see how they do things and all that stuff. And then with time, a couple of things I realized back then, you know, that I told myself I wasn't going to let it happen to me was that I realized that um, many people that are in the industry, they, they have a lot of talents, but they are scared of teaching the next person because guess what? They are scared that if they teach the next person, the next person is going to leave them and probably take their clients with them as well. So, so they, they get so scared of saying, oh, I don't want this person to know what I'm doing. If I tell this person what I'm doing tomorrow, this person will become better than me and all that stuff. So I was able to pick certain things. But guess what? Sometime along the line, we had a situation. Uh, we, we actually went to shoot. My, my, my boss had sent some guys to go shoot a wedding. And they went and shot this wedding without audio. Oh, God. Guess what? Guess what? Why did they shoot it without audio? It was because they were saying things they were not taught. So they didn't know it. So they could. So when they, they came, all they knew was how to press record and stop, right? So when they came across that situation, they couldn't be able to like say, okay, let me go into settings, fix this, fix this. Check I'll, the so sound. Can, yes. So they they screwed up, and that was a whole lot. And you know how it, it is. Weddings can never be repeated. Do you understand? Yeah. How do you want to tell tell the story that you shot your wedding? It's somebody's wedding. They paid you for it, and you screwed up. So I sat down and I told myself that I wanted to be better. I wanted to, you know, be able to show people what, you know, most people didn't want to teach me, right? So I started off, um, I met with Robert Peters, John Uche. I started off with uh, being a BTS person. I was taking pictures on sets. Most of the pictures I was taking was just for, for behind the scene, right? So basically for continuity, actually. So because in America, for you to be able to, like, the production value in America is too expensive, to be honest. So people want to shoot a movie, being able to afford that continuity person, it's it's a lot, right? Because mm-hmm. so they, they want to be able to visualize the continuity, take pictures of, of you know the outfit before the scene, the makeup, mm-hmm. the costume. So that was where I came into place. They brought me in. So uh, come be doing before this. you continue, when you talk of BTS, BTS means behind the scene. Yes, behind the scene. Behind the scene. Okay, come on. Yeah, I'm so, so 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 I set off um doing the BTS. You know, I started shooting um a couple behind the scenes for, you know, most of these big shots. You know, they will call me. Uh, we still not a lot about Peters, John Uche. They will be like, "Oh, Chris, we're shooting a movie. We want to do BTS for us? Your job is just to focus on, you know, before they, when the actors are about to get ready, when they get onto their scene, take a picture, um, the location, take a picture of the location. Let's see what it looks like before." We turn it upside down so that when we want to rearrange it for the owner, we can be able to get it back on, you know, on track. So I was like, okay, I could do that. And I got paid for it, you know. So um, I started doing that. You know, it was okay. Every time the people had BTS, they would call me. They will be like, oh, let's call Chris. So they will call me. You know, I tried acting. You know, I tried I tried to be an actor. It was it was so crazy. Um, I remember <laughs> being on this set. I remember being on this set. Uh, it, it's called, uh, it's a movie called Scarlet. Uh, you should check it out. Uh, it was produced by Winston Taylor, directed by um, uh, Scully was directed by I think it was um, hmm, was it Janucci? Yeah, Janucci directed it. Robert Peters shot. So you acted in Scarlet. So you are an yes. you are an actor in Scarlet. And then I'm gonna check out that movie. I'm gonna see acting. Is, I, acted in Scar- acted in Scarlet, and then for some reason, I think that I knew. Eh, maybe by now I would have I would have made it too because my first time I was very funny. So guess what? I was ashamed of myself because everybody was laughing at me. So during the, the, the like, like there was this scene that we, we actually took and then they asked me, to, they asked me to, 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 to take my lines. And I was like, when I arrived in America, it was as cold as hell. <laughs> so the, the reaction alone, people started laughing on set and I was like, wow. And then Janusha walked up to me and said, I don't think this is your calling. I think you should do something else. <laughs> so I was like, okay. wow. So I felt, I felt so bad. <laughs> But I was like, okay, no problem. What else can I do? So he said, do BTS for just shoot with this camera, do like a couple of things. So I started doing that. And, you know, and before you know what was happening, uh, my big um, 
uh, opportunity came one time. It was on set on set of this movie. Oh, can I remember the name of this movie? Oh, da, da, da. It was produced by Princess Marker, actually. Uh, I don't remember the name, mm-hmm. but um, I think it featured Sandra von Dufer, John Dumelo. It was a bunch of them, you know. It was the same. Oh, I think I remember that movie because I know that Sandra acted in a couple of movies, and Sandra is somebody yes, I know, yes. and I know that she acted in yeah. the movie with John Dumelo. I cannot remember the name as well, yes. but I think so, I know the movie you're talking so about. So Sandra was, Sandra was in the movie. Uh, it was a bunch of people. You know, she directed it. And then uh, the DOP was um, Tim Wilson. You know, Tim mm-hmm. is a great guy. You know, is a is a is a dude from you know I met here. I met him on the set of One Night in Vegas when we were shooting One Night in Vegas. One Night in Vegas was directed by Kubi Maswell. So um, I I met Tim and Tim is a great guy. You know, he's someone I wanted to learn from. You know, he's all these robotic guys that they even before Ronin, before the track. You know, this guy was was great. He's he's a great guy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, seeing Tim, you know, working on set with Tim on One Night in Vegas actually made me realize that, oh, Tim is a great, I want to work with you. So I told Tim, I was like, Tim, bro, let me ask him, they just call me, I'm always, you know, I want to work with you and all that stuff. And I was like, sure, no problem. So on sort of um, this particular movie, I'm trying to remember the name. Oh, oh my God, I wish I... I you told me I'd have looked down those movies and be able to tell you which one it's, it was. It's okay, it's okay, so, Chris, it's so okay. So that that particular day... Um, you know, we're shooting, and I think they booked him for like 10 days. And you know, here in America, uh, you know, everybody works by hour, you know, but if you book someone, just let them know what they want to do for you because at the end of it all, everybody has other things they are doing. Do you understand? So I think they had yes. booked him for like seven seven to 10 days, if I'm not mistaken, for the production. But along the line, due to technical situations, the production was going to take more than seven days or 10 days. I don't remember the actual number of days. And, and Tim was like, Bro, I can't continue because I have another job. Another client is waiting for me because Tim is a big shot. Do you understand? Yeah. So like, I have another client waiting for me and I have to go back to that client. And they were like, oh no, we really need you. What, can we pay you double? Can we pay you extra? So you, and it was like, I cannot disappoint my clients. Now, guess what? I learned a whole bunch of stuff from different people. Do you understand? Yeah. So in his head, it was like, why would I disappoint a client that has paid me, booked me for almost how many months now because of your production? If you had planned your production very well, we won't be in this situation. So it goes back to planning. So everybody I meet on set, I learn different things from them. So I could tell you that I have a lot of mentors. Do you understand? So on that yeah. day, Tim said he wasn't going to continue. They went back and forth. They tried to convince him money-wise, offer him everything he was going to do. And Tim said, no, he wasn't interested. And then the director, John Uche, he had to decide. Reason being that it was a bunch of... Um, um, actors on set, you know, he had, um, uh, what's it called? He had the actors, he had the, um, he had the, um, the production team, everybody, the, the producer's money was actually going down the drain. So as a good director, or do I say as a good coach, he needed to decide mm-hmm. what was going to be my next line of action. To get a new production team on board was going to be difficult. So he called yeah. me to decide, he said, he said, Chris, can I see your BTS? I showed him. He said, it's not bad. He said, do you think you can shoot this? You can complete this movie? I said, director, this is challenging. You know? These people are shooting on Black Magic and I have Canon. He said, Chris, I think I, I believe in you. You know, I was on that told you that you should uh, leave uh, acting. The acting is not for you. Acting. You should focus on... Uh... Yeah. So I like, yes. I, I said, yes, director, you did. He said... I will help you. I think you can do it. And I was like, okay. And that was how I became a DOP. And that was my Please, first... what is the meaning of DOP? Director of Photography. Okay. <laughs> so and, you have and, to say these things and you're talking to lay yeah. people, please. So, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and, and, that was, and that was my first... Um, that was my first shot. That was my first um, uh, project being a director of photography. But I was just like... A, the second, you know, after the whole... Thing was shot it was just like the end bit of the of the movie so when i shot the movie like people came out like oh wow well like this shot you know it was good the editor came out and said oh i didn't even have to do color, color um correction i think the colors were were perfect i didn't even have to do too much work i think you should continue and then i had um judge kalu come up and say oh chris i want you to shoot for me you know give me this um you know i'll pay you don't worry i'll rent the equipments for you that you're gonna use to shoot 
And then we shot Mastermind. We shot a couple, Judge Carlo, Fred Idika, Pascal Atuma. We shot a couple of movies together, you know. And then mm-hmm. that was how everything changed. And then we had the likes of uh, Cam Quintus coming back then, saying he wanted to shoot the movie AK, E-K-E-Y, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and the list goes on and on. Do you understand? And I tell people, yeah. like, f- for, for me, it's, um, I, think, I think photography is what you see. Like, how are you able to tell your story? Uh, if you've been given a script, you can be able to, you know, the same thing, you know, people tell me, what's the difference? People ask me, what's the difference between a photographer and a, and, uh, and a cinematographer and a, and, a, and a DOP? But I tell people, we do basically the same thing. The only difference okay. is that a photographer tells his story through an image, that, Im- like, yes. through, a still, through a still image. Why Correct. a cameraman tells his, his story through, through the visuals. Like, he tries to tell you the story through what you see. Yes. Same thing with the photographer. But the difference, it's just like shooting a wedding and being able to tell what happened in the wedding from beginning to the end. Do you understand where I'm coming from? So I see them as, for you to be a, a good photographer, you must have an idea about your aperture. Your... I love those settings. So for me, I tell, I tell people, and I'm like... To be honest with you, I think it's almost the same. It's it's basically the same thing. As far as you're able to control your lighting, you know how to have a perfect lighting. Because every image, every image you put out there starts off with your lighting. Um, a good a good um, cinematographer or a good f- photographer is all about your lighting. What are you using your lighting to do? What are you using your light to create? Are you are you using your light to create? Um, are you trying to create? What, what is it you're trying to do? Because you decide what you want to do. Every uh, cinematographer can tell a story. You, if you give them the same script, they can narrate it in different ways. The same way that you have directors directing. If you give an editor videos shot from one particular cinematographer, an editor can narrate that same story in different ways. And that's the same thing yeah. that can also happen to a photographer or a cinematographer. Do you understand? And right. for me, I think, yep. I think that has been, you know, that has been my, my that's, that's my background. Yes. No, you see, I told you that again. I know that when you start talking, there is a lot that just looking at your social media profile, I can already tell that there's a lot you do. So I told you, that's why I actively called you, called you out not to be modest, to talk to us about what you do. So again, thanks again. But at the same time, I would love for you to, yes, we've heard what Chris does. We hear the, how you got into it how you are actually taking advice from people who are in there and listening to the people you call mentors, right? Because I believe that one of the things that has really helped you to grow and be where you are today is because you listen to people. You let people give you feedback, which you used now to grow, which so you took that feedback and you worked on something. You started with your behind the scene, then for some for own reason, there came in, there was a need that you fulfilled that they said, hey, man, you can jump in here and do this. And that is how you went into shooting and all of that. I think that that is a story. That is something that a lot of people listening can learn from. I know that because there is a lot of lack of patience out in the world today, especially when people have already grown up, when people are adults, we are even seeing younger people now not even having the patience to learn something and go through. You are calling big names inside the entertainment industry, both in Cameroon and in Nigeria, in the US. These are people that you've interacted with. And I bet this would not have happened if you did not have that humility to listen to the people that approach to you. Yeah. Yeah. To listen to the people that approach you and talk to you. So one thing I would love for you to talk about is when you are doing this right how has your experience in this whole um, entertainment industry how has that empowered you to help other people because one of the reasons that I'm talking to you today is because you helped someone and that person spoke to me about you and I was like hey can I talk to him so how has all of this how does all of this connect to your willingness to take away that scarcity mentality that you mentioned above that because I know this if I don't teach if I teach this person this person is going to take away my job that is a scarcity mentality that we try to talk our people against or talk the human being against because if we do 
do the same thing, you're going to have your geek and I'll have my own geek. You get it? So how did all of this, your experiences lead you into being open enough to teach other people and make them better at what they do? Um, okay. Um, thank you for the question. So, so what I, what I always say, like, you know, I always go back to my dad. I think my dad may so rest in peace. Um, is my greatest, um, uh, motivation. It, it keeps me going. You know, once in a while, when I'm I'm stressed and I'm going through stuff, I go back to the words of encouragement he had always given me when I was young. You know, and I I put them you know um, to use. My dad always told me that um, the most smartest, pe- the most gifted people are literally lying down six feet in the grave, and um, they are lying there without having anybody uh, who knows or has the skill to do what they've done. There are lots of great men in the world today that are dead, that died with their skills, that nobody knows the secrets. You can imagine a man that got married that does, wife does not even know the password to his phone and the man died tomorrow. Most things, if you see the man get money for, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking broken, right? Hey, the please, man have it's okay. In, <laughs> the, man, the man might have money in his account that the wife will not even know that this man has this amount of money because guess what? It has been secret all along, right? So I mm-hmm. tell people, first of all, the thing about it is that you have to live an open life. How do you do that? Like, whoever is around you, you got to show them what you do. Do you understand? Because at the end of it all, what if you don't show these people? These people feel like, you know, I've seen people who look at me and they feel like I do something else than what I do. I'm one of the cinematographers in America that I don't have another job. I don't have a knife. Apart from the fact that I, I, I sell house in Nigeria, which is like more like what I do back home. In America, I literally don't have another job. All I do is I shoot movies, I shoot events. I do, and this is how I pay my bills. This is how I buy my house. This is how I do things. I, this is how I survive. Do you understand? People look at me, they're like, that's not possible. Do you understand where I'm coming from? But at the end of it all, I've seen people like like the like your like your Cam Quintus that's that is being celebrated in Cameroon. I, I remember when Cam Quintus used to like be by the by the trash trying to survive, trying to look for food to eat. That's why when I look at people look at him, they don't know understand the fact this guy has been through things. Yeah. Do you understand? Is it the um Claudio Oben that owns busy vibe, you know, in Cameroon? These are guys yes. that I know, like, we, we we were there. We knew what it was. We went through these things together. Do you understand? Uh, I remember 2015, back then, um, um, I think 2014, I'd shot Captive with Claudio Oben. Uh, I produced mm-hmm. Captive with Claudio Oben, you know. Cla- Captive was a great movie. Um, at that point, we didn't even have money. We were nominated for awards, um, Guillermo Award. And, you know, Guillermo stands for Golden Icon Academy Award. We were nominated mm-hmm. for the World Music Independent Film, Film Festival. Uh, we couldn't even afford plane tickets. To, to go, go to this, this, to go down to these places, we had to drive twenty two. We had to drive twenty two hours. Well, I think it was Dallas or Houston. We drove twenty two to I mean, to twenty three hours to Dallas, just for these festivals, you know. And people never knew what we put into it. I'll be honest with you. Um, as it as it is right now, I'll tell you that I, at times I feel like I lost the sale, you know, because I felt like it got to a stage in my life that I felt like I became too comfortable. I felt like, yeah. you know, uh, and that, that actually started after 2015 when I won um, NAFCA 2015 for best cinematography. You know, when I competed against um, the likes of Robert Peters, um, uh, uh, is it uh, Dark November or Black? Uh, no, no, no. Um, mm. Ah. I'm trying to remember these movies, man. It's, it's so many really movies fun. in your head. I don't expect you to remember yeah. everything. Yeah. So, so, so we competed against that movie and, we, you know, we won. Uh, we had about 13 nominations, but we came back with best cinematography. At that point, that was like one of the biggest things to me because, you know, I was competing against my mentor. I was competing against my own boss. Someone who taught me what I knew. Do you understand? You, you can imagine, even going for the festival, I felt like, oh, I've already won by being nominated among these great compete, names. This yeah. big, this being able to compete against these big brands, these big people. You know, and when they came out and said, I, I won that particular, you know, award for best cinematography. To me, it was like, it was crazy because guess what? I shot a movie with a 5D Mark II and they were shooting. And they, at that point, they shot their movie with um, Red. Do you understand? Are those softwares? So like, are those, are those softwares those are cam- or cameras? No, no, okay. Camera. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, it's like somebody driving a, a Okada and somebody driving a, a Rolls Royce. Oh boy. The- Do you understand? And, and we came out and we won. So at the end of it all, a lot of things that when I go back and I look back at it, and I feel like it wouldn't have been possible if certain people hid certain things from me. Do you understand? So in the world today, I tell myself, it doesn't take anything out of me. The world is, the, 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 the entertainment industry, the world is a big market for all of us. Mm-hmm. When I train people, when I teach people what I do, I show them how to go into the field, how to make money. At the end of it all, it's all about, they say people love money, people know how to um, make people pay money. And that's true because at the end of it all, I, whoever works with me, I try to show them how you can be able to, apart from the, the, the main aspect of doing the job, I also try to let them understand the, 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 the uh, 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 presentation of the job. How do you 
go to a client? How do you talk to a client, you know, yes. to make them pay the that soft, big money? The to, make them, to make them pay that big money. Yes. Do you understand? Because yes. you might know everything you know today and be the most skilled man in the world. If you don't know how to com compose yourself and talk to somebody and make them bring the money out, your skill is, is wasted. And a lot of people in this world today that they don't have no, they don't have no skill, but they are out alone. But then they talk to you as a, as a business person, you bring out all your money and you invest in their projects. Okay. Do you understand? Look at, yes. look at Uber, for example. Uber doesn't have any car. Uber never owned, didn't start with a car. But guess what? Mm. They own one of the biggest sanitation companies in the world. Yep. They Do talked about it so, and people brought in their cars to use. Yes. Thank you. So, so I realized that, you know, what can I do? How can I help the next generation? How can I be able to create employment for people that are around me? I have an office. I have a company in Nigeria. It's called Lover Concept Enterprise. It's Lover Concept. It's, it's the same um, Lover Concept, but I try to put something in Nigeria for my people out there so that at least they can, you know, I can be able to, you know, pay people salary, create employment for the young ones out there, you know, and nice. it's not been easy, you know, because at the end of it all, the same situation we face that at times you train people, they leave you, do other stuff. So we won't take your jobs. Some don't even care. You know, some when you become familiar with them because you feel like you want to make sure that they are cool. You know, so I see at the end of it, I began to see why most people don't do what they do. Why most people don't want to help anybody. Do you understand I'm coming from? But at the same time, whether you like it or not, you still have to look out for people. You know, they always say that the bad egg man spoil the good one. So that you like yeah. or not, there are still good people out there are still good people out there. They need that help. So you can't stop and say, oh, I'm not going to help this person because I feel like, oh, I'm scared that this person will take away my clients. I'm scared that this person will take away my job. I have, I have um, boys I train, and at times my clients go behind and tell them that, oh, um, I, have a, I have a job for you. Can you come and do it? But guess what? Some of them will be like, oh, um, you need to call my boss. You need to call Chris. Let him, you know, talk to him first before he would, you know. Yep. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Um, there's a guy called DJ Selmo. He's from Cameroon. Do you understand? Yes. Back, yes. back then, most of most of Selmo's jobs, I used to do most of them back then. Selmo would subcontract me. I'll go do his jobs. When I finish doing Selmo's job, I would um I'll give it to Selmo. I'll put his logo on it. You know, I could have put my logo and say shot by lower concepts or or shot by Chris. Do you get? Mm -hmm. But I'll put his logo on it. It's his job. He invited me to come and do that job. If I go to the event and somebody tells me, Oh, please, can I um have your number, please? I'll be like, Oh, okay. Um let me get my boss's card for you. I'll get Selmo's card and I'll give it to them. Not that it was, it, Selmo is like, well, as of then, it was the, like any bigger than me or something, but it was just like, he gave me the gigs. It is his job. Yes. So I owe him that. I owe him that, you know, to say, and that was where I met, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Ice. Ice, yes. It was, on, it, was on Sel, it, was, it was on Selmo's production. Ice had come there, you know, to learn. Somebody didn't come and that was how I was able to meet her and, you know, we kind of communicated and, you know, since then we became cool and all. every time even she even told me she was like, Oh, when you're doing your wedding, let me come cover your wedding. I did my wedding in Nigeria last year, December. And she was like, Oh, I want to come. You didn't invite me, but you know, it's just a whole lot of stuff from my head. You know what I mean? But yes. at the end of it all, I, I tell people, you know, what you do today, everybody I, I have ever helped, I tell them one thing. I tell them I'm like, whatever I'm doing for you today, I'm not doing it for you to 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 pay me back. Because the truth is that I don't know if I'll be around for you to be able to do that thing back for me. But yes. all I want to tell you is, do for somebody else. Do for somebody else. Look out for somebody else. Help somebody else. There's somebody out there who needs your help. Do you understand? We need a team. It's it's a big industry. It's a big industry. There are people out there that you feel like you don't know. I've, I've, I've seen a whole bunch of talents, you know, great minds in this industry that I've come across in my life. The likes of Wale mm. Champion, Bolu, uh, team, um, uh, Shot by T-Fair, uh, uh, it's a bunch of them. Um, soft, yeah. soft nation. I had, this, I had this girl in Nigeria. Her name is Ife. You know, even though she's very stubborn, but I still love her regardless. You know, you know, I I looked out for her, met her. I remember when I met her on was it Instagram or whatever, and she said, "Oh, I want to start. I want to do what you do." And I, I I looked at her. I was like, "Are you sure you can actually do this?" Because you're a female, and you know, um, in this industry, people people always feel like females really can't do much. But let me let me break mm -hmm. it down to you. The the Biggest movies that have ever been produced right now in Africa, in 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 Nigeria, most of them were being produced by women. By women. Some of them were being directed by women. Do you mm -hmm. understand? So these women are doing even bigger than bigger things than you that you feel like that you're the real, you know. Because you know back then you see all these directors, they feel like oh they are the real shit. 
I remember yeah. back then, Nigeria, I used to have a director that came from Nigeria. He would tell people to kneel down and raise up their hands. Do you oh, understand? God have mercy. <laughs> because they want to be actors. Do you understand? So at the, at the end of it all, like, looking at the way these things are, you realize that these women are literally doing great stuff, even more than the men. Mm-hmm. So why not That's teach nice. them? Why not, show, why not show them what you know and let them, you know, go out there and, and, do those, and do those magic? You know, that so is that's, nice. That's again, <laughs> you used it. Yeah, again, just saying that, yes, I'm happy to say I wanted you to be able to create a connection on what led you to be able to help other people. And I see where that is coming from. Yes, there's going to be challenges. You're going to have those people that you will help and they will hurt you, right? They say, you, I help you. A lot of them, a lot of them. Right. I've actually, I've, yeah. I've, and I've you really also have, have those people. people. No, I've, I've, yeah, I've, go I've, ahead. Trust me. So, because the thing is this, I, I saw those situations firsthand. You know, back then I, I used to ask, I used to ask myself, why would my boss that I was working, why would he be acting like this? He doesn't want these people to know much about what he was doing. He had to, he tried to hide most of those things. And then I was like, why is this man doing this? But but with time, when I began to, you know, meet people, train people, show people what I do, mm-hmm. I realized that as much as it is, I see people who, who, no matter what it is, no matter what you show them, no matter what help you do to them, they always had, they always have this, thing about them that is just not perfect but at the end of it all what makes you a good manager is how you're able to manage different people people mm-hmm. do you understand yep. that's what makes you unique because because the thing about that you're, you're just an ordinary human like everybody but your unique your unique ability to be able to manage and differentiate different characters is what makes you unique yep i agree do you, do you, do you understand so so that's how i see it and that's what i think and for me I realize that most of it, no matter what you know, they do to you or how they make you feel, you, you still can't stop loving them. Just show them love. Show them, you know, just let them know that what they are doing is wrong. Because I, I always tell people, if you hurt me, I, I, I can't fight you. I can't beat you. But all I want to do is just make you understand that what you're doing is wrong. So that tomorrow, even if you feel like what you're doing is is perfect, is is right, you realize that oh, I actually hurt this man. I need to apologize to him someday. You might not see it at that moment. Just like me growing up, my other brother. Dr. Kennedy Okonkwo is like my biggest um, mentor. When he sent me to this country, we, we had a lot of situations and that at times I, I used to feel like this man hated me. But today yeah, I realized at that... At some point, Chris, at some point in life, we all feel like our parents hated us because they they meant, they, they, they directed us to go the right way. Tr- so. tr- trust me, trust me, there are times I would, I would, I would come back late, I will get locked out of the house. I will misbehave, they will freeze my, they will freeze my bank card. Do you understand? And I was like, what? I'm doing well. My, my, my This man bought me. I'm doing, I'm okay. So why is he treating me like I'm a baby? But with time, I realized that this man didn't mean no harm. All he wanted was for me to understand the fact that these are the things that life entails. That the truth is everybody has a, a part to play in your life. Every Every team player, every team player has what they bring to the table. You understand? You can't do it alone. So that you like it or not, you need a team, you know. But at Agreed. times your team might act, they might act weird, they might act like, you know, they are crazy. They, but you just have to like understand and know how to bring them back and let them understand the fact that what they're doing at times is wrong. I have, I have, I have one of my my boys that I work with. That most of the time, you know, he will do something wrong. I call him, I be like, you know, he doesn't know. He's a young man trying to make money, you know. And I be like, guy, this thing is just this is wrong. You understand? Let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. And at times, you know, it listens. Not everybody has that mindset to listen, to try to learn from the other person. But at times, the things I'm telling you are things that have been true. It's like when I mm-hmm. tell my boss, I'm like, if we do somebody's wedding today, by tomorrow morning, or if possible today, let them have some of their pictures and their trailer before they wake up in the morning. They'll be like, oh, oh. boss, we're tired. They'll be like, oh, boss, we're tired. We can't, we can't deliver this. How will we deliver this job? I have an opportunity to work with the likes of Tony Elumelu, you know. Uh, it's a bunch of them. It's a bunch. Of, I can't start even, you know, calling names. Naming you know, names. What is political, political um, this in Nigeria, like the big, the big shots. But guess what? Why do they come back to you? You know, I have clients that when I work with them, I don't really, like, my social media doesn't really bring me the, the, the gigs. Yeah. Most of my gigs come by someone saying, oh, they want something done. They'll be like, oh, I know this guy, Chris. Chris oh, what of recommendation. So it's mostly recommendation. Oh, nice. Be like, oh, 
I know this guy, Chris, he did his job for me and he would deliver your job the next day. And they will call me and be like, oh, are you available for this day? Even when I give them my prizes, I'll be like, oh, I have, I have I have clients flying me all around the world to come shoot for them in Nigeria, different countries. You know, I've been to Cameroon. I've been opportunity to come to Cameroon. I was in a uh, a beach hotel. Uh, mm. uh, I think we came there to shoot. We shoot. We shot um, the fire in the cyst. It was with um, Claudio Oben, uh, produced by Claudio and uh, Belinda Nabila. I have. Um, we had. Um, what's his name on it? We had um, Cindy Emma Day. We had. Um, uh, what's this girl? Ah, oh, man. It's a bunch of them. I just keep forgetting names. Yes, nice. you know. And guess what? And, and guess what? I, I had fun. Cameroon is one of the. And after I came back to, to America, I told myself like, ah, I need to go back to Cameroon because guess what? I enjoyed. <laughs> I actually enjoyed Cameroon. Uh, I that was the first time I had a water massage at my beach hotel. <laughs> I finished shooting movies. You know, I come back to the. Are you waiting for us? Being good myself after every session. You know, I you know I felt, I felt like I was. I felt welcomed. I felt like, you know, these people actually really cared about, you know, and I, and I came back, I told my friends, I said, Cameroon has something that you guys don't understand. I told my friend Claudio, I told Quintus, I said, before then, Quintus had not even produced the Fisherman's Diary that is on Netflix today. I told him, I said, Cameroon has potentials. Cameroon has potential because it's, it's an untapped market. Mm-hmm. Back, back then, we yeah. had sponsors from all these big brands, you know, they gave us sponsors. It was a bunch of us, and I was like, wow. Because yeah. there is that, there is, as you said, there is something that they want to tap, which again, they've not not gotten there yet, but the process is going. Talking of the likes of Kang Quintus, I always, when I saw how far he has gone in the industry, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Hopefully someday I'll be able to talk to him, but I did reach out to him. I think that he is also one young person that is recommendable. And let me say that is commendable and can be a good influence to other young people that are growing no, in the Cam, industry. Cam, Cam Quintus has, has looked out for people. I'm going to be honest. Like, uh, yeah. Before I became a citizen of America, I'll tell you the truth. Even on life, anywhere in the world, Cam Quintus paid for my own, for me to file for my, my citizenship. He paid for me. He used his own money. There you go. There you when go. I got my, when I got my 10 years um, green card, and I went and I was like, bros, let's celebrate. Oh, uh, God, just let me, I don't collect 10 years. And he was like, mm-hmm. ah, bros, don't collect 10 years. Ah, that's good. That's good. You know, you need to file for 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 Your citizenship. Passport. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure I want to do that. Now I don't have the money. It's like, what are you talking about? I beg, come, Jerry. No worry. You just went inside the room, brought that money, and said, use it. Go and file for your for citizenship. Oh, you know? that's amazing. So, that is so, amazing. So at the, end, at, at the end of it all, to be honest with you, you know, there are there are great people out there. There are lots of good people. Yeah. You know, and I tell people, you, you never know what, you know, the next person, the person you offer a meal today. You don't know what they might do for you tomorrow. The world is a... So that is one of the points of this show, Chris. When I started talking to you, I told you that sometimes we see people, right? These are people, someone like you, uh, my sister talked to me about you, nice things to say about you, all the nice sticks and trips that you gave her on her photography journey because she is, again, studio with eyes. She's, I hold her to very high esteem. She's our own magic maker, right, for, for our pictures. And... Just looking at you without talking to you like this, right? Somebody will cannot, we cannot really tell. That's why I always say, as I told you at the beginning of this, I like to talk to people like this so that people can come on. Like, we want, we just want to know more, right? Look at Khan Quinters. This guy is amazing. When I watched Fisherman Diaries and I saw what he has done on it, I was like, this is great. But I don't know that much. If you ever told me, like, there was a social media time on social media that he got bombarded for the only Cameroonian, the first Cameroonian to ever do this. You don't see the social media does not show us that good side of him, that selfless side of him that helps people. That's why I love things like this because it kind of exposes that other side of people that social media never never propels, right? Social media doesn't talk a lot about the good things people do. Most of the times it's when there is scandal that you come up to social media. <laughs> you know that. So again, thank you so much for accepting to talk to me. And with such a tight schedule, you see how the create the time to come talk to us about this and give the little tricks that you've given, the little nuggets you've given about cinematography in general, whether in the U.S., in Cameroon, or in Nigeria. I do appreciate. One last thing before I let you go for the day. One thing I saw on your profile, and I think that it's important to you, is the whole, what does this statement mean to you when you say, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job? That is something that you said. 
what does that mean to you? Uh, so for me, I think um, um, every day is a learning process. Like um, as, as you go every day, uh, one mistake most of us make is um, we stop we stop learning. We we forget to to push ourselves, you, you know. And and what we don't realize is that if we don't push ourselves, uh, we don't have skills that we have to put on the job. I've I've watched people grow. I've had I've had people that I've I've, I've uh, like, like that I saw go from they taking pictures and I'll be like, mm. I used to have a boy back then. He, he would take a picture and, and he would send it to me and I'll be like, mm, I don't like it. It would be like, oh, you don't like my picture. You don't like this. But at some point, I started liking every job he does. It, whenever he does a job, I'll be like, it's okay. he will be like, it's okay. What does it's okay mean? I'll be like, it's good. Okay. I'll be like, I'll, I'll be like, it's good. it will be like, oh, that's not an answer. That's not an answer. You don't, you, you don't appreciate what I do. And I tell him like, it's not like I don't appreciate what you do. I love what you do, but I feel like there's room for growth. You know, just work on yourself. And today, most of them, they're doing great. Some of them even know better than I, I know. They do better than me. Do you understand? But I, 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 I'm okay and I'm happy that at least they... Because every father, when born Peking, they always pray, making Peking big pastor. Do you there understand? There we go. So if, yes. you don't, if, you don't realize that, if you don't realize that you have to, you know, work on yourself, learn new things, then you're going to stay where you are. Do you understand so you gotta yeah. be able to when I, grow up yeah when i saw that i was like wow this is a good one i'm going definitely going to ask chris to talk about this so thank you so much for sharing before i let you go no chris there's something that i do on my podcast each podcast episode is just giving you that mic you have an international audience right i want you to be able to say something that will impact someone so this is me making you a motivational speaker on my platform so this is that magical time please just say that say if you had the opportunity to talk to someone out there what uh -huh. can you say that you know that can impact somebody or motivate somebody to feel to do better let's put it that or find the best versions of themselves what you say uh, i'll tell you um don't give up whatever you do um like my father always told me like um, um if you boil a bucket of hot water and the water is very cold what do you do to that water you leave it after some time, water will get cold, right? Um, coming from storm, I, I've lived under the bridge. I was, I, I lost my dad. I lived under the bridge for years. Uh, not just me, not just my family. Went from from rags to riches, and you know, if we can get there, you can do it. Do you understand? So I tell people, just keep pushing, keep believing in yourself. Don't give up. One thing you need need to do is just keep putting in the work every day wake up pray to god without god nothing whatever you pray to i don't care what it is if you me i'm a christian right but i believe that everybody has their own religion we have the muslims yes. we have the pagans we have whatever you pray for we all believe that there's one god keep praying to your god tell your god to bless the work of your hands whatever you do just say god change my story there's a god if there are people that want to pray there's a god that is there willing to listen do you understand in your darkest moments in the moments you feel like things are going zigzag god is there just waiting for you to say you you need this help so at the end of it all keep doing what you do keep putting in the work no matter what it is at times you feel like nothing is happening it's just like i'll give you an example you get a hose you're trying to fill up a bucket of water a bucket of water you pour small water with cup you know they're full but the more you keep pouring you might not see the impact at that moment do you understand but with time you realize that that cup you're putting inside that bucket is actually filling up the bucket. Do yes. you understand? You might feel like, oh, I'm not seeing the physical. I'm not seeing the, the changes. I'm not seeing it happen. Do you yeah. understand? But, but honestly, there is a change. There's something happening that you're not literally seeing. So what do I tell people? Keep putting in the work, you know, try to, you know, work on yourself. You know, um, don't, 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 you know, I get angry a lot, you know, but if you can be able to, we all, we all have different you know, different things about us. We there's a little or more we can take. Like me, when I get too crazy, I just be like, you know, I just need my space. You know, I just say, everybody, just give me space. Let me just be in my own zone. And then after I come back to them, I'm be like, okay, I'm sorry if I sounded that way to you. Learn to, you know, get, you know, to to don't let everything get you angry. You know, that's my own fault. That's my own, my own, you know, my little, oh my you know, goodness. thing, you know, and, and if I could work on that, that's one of the things I'll work on. Um, try not to let everything you see make you angry. You know, you always need a team. You always need that, that people, you know, that, that will come around to, to, to create something with you, to create that magic with you. You know, you know, they say mm -hmm. trace company, trace crowd, but at the end of it all, most times there are times you actually need that crowd. 
you know, that crowd, some good yes, selling that's places. Crowd, yes. So, so, so at times that crowd might be useful to you. At, crowd, at times that crowd you feel like it's not what anything might be your saving grace. So at the end of it, I'll keep your head straight, keep doing what you do, believe in yourself, you know, never give up. Just know that, you know, the world is like a floating river. Whoever is on top, whoever is, whoever is, it might float to this man today, tomorrow might be your own turn. So that young man you see out there, you feel like is nobody, can be on top tomorrow. So respect everybody, keep doing what you do, and try to be the best version of yourself. Because guess what? The only competition that you have is yourself. It's you yourself. So just do the right thing. I love yep. that. Oh, God. Thank you so much, Christopher Okonko. Thank you for coming up and talking to us. I do appreciate you a lot. My dear listeners, I hope that when you listen to this episode with Chris and I, you'll be able to learn something. You'll be able to find something in yourself that he has, as he has told us his story, how he has evolved, how things have changed from for him. And hope that that will be able to instill some faith in you and to believe that when you work, the reward is always there. Thanks again, Chris. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being part of the You Can Be Anything podcast tribe. I appreciate you for spending the time with us. Please kindly follow the podcast on all the social media platforms at You Can Be Anything podcast. And if you like to watch the video versions of the episode, you can find those on YouTube under my name, Solange Che. Please kindly subscribe to that channel. I'd appreciate it. Also, if you would like to support the podcast, there is a support button on the website, www.youcanbeanythingpodcast.com, where you can click on to support the podcast. And for you who is ready to be my guest, do not hesitate to reach out either on the social media platforms or just email me at youcanbeanything21 at gmail.com. I'll be happy to have you. Stay blessed and be good to each other. Bye-bye.